welcome back to my channel my name is louise and this is louise's lifestyle thank you for joining me so it's the first week of july and thought we'd have a little stroll around my front garden and back garden not really a, a garden as such it's more of a yard and a driveway here we've got my musa basju recently purchased a couple of months ago from golden days nursery and um I've not had much luck with bananas. This is the second one that I've bought and hopefully I can keep it alive. I've repotted it. I got this one from Golden Days Nursery and I've repotted it and it's producing these little pups there, which is good. So it means that I'm doing something right. Hopefully I can keep it alive. This I know is a hardy banana but for the first year I'm going to overwinter it indoors because it's quite a, a young sort of small plant because the last one I tried to overwinter was much bigger than that and it succumbed to the frost even though I had it protected. This here is my uh, oak leaf papaya seed grown it's the second one that I've grown from seed and it has flowered a number of times uh, including this year early on it only produces male flowers unfortunately but I have heard that oak not oak but pa papayas in general as they mature they can suddenly start producing female you know become um, self-pollinators got some weeds in the pot there it's been in this been outside for a couple of months now and at the back there this tangly mess is not the boog well that behind it is clematis but this is the bougainvillea one of two that i got from bangladesh back in 2018 uh, i have one a deep red um flame red and the other ones are sort of a deep purpley pink so um yeah they do need pruning but i can't prune them now I have to wait till they finish flowering and when will they flower well they need sunny weather. I've got other flowers in between to brighten the place up. Now here are the only two citrus trees that I've got now. Um, I lost a lot of uh, citrus trees uh, over the last winter. This is a wrong pool lime. This is the second wrong pool lime that I've had. Um, this I got back in December. It's dropped all its leaves. It was indoors and then it did produce flowers and I got a few fruitlets on there, little baby fruit from that first flowering. And since then, just over the last week, it's put out all these lovely pink uh, buds. So hopefully more flowers and fruit to come. This, uh, the leaves here looking a bit yellow. So I have fed it and um, I'm going to keep on top of the fertilizer i've repotted it. it was in a very small pot when i got it and uh, it, it's been outside now for a couple of months and next to it here is the more recent purchase the yuzu so i've got a yuzu because um i've heard the more hardy more cold tolerant and it does resemble um, the citrus macrotera, the chatgra so that's another reason why I got it um, I like unusual citrus this is all new growth that it's recently put out it seemed to have been heavily pruned when I got this plant there were no fruits or flowers on it and all the stems every single one of them had been cut back so where they've been cut back uh, it's starting to put out new growth so it may be a bit too optimistic to expect flowers and fruit this year. I think it'll put all its energy into sort of regrowing, uh, you know, new leaves, new stems. But as long as it's healthy and I can keep it alive, um, you know, hopefully next year I'll see some flowers and possible fruit. I haven't repotted it though, so yeah, could do with uh, getting a larger pot for it. And then down here, these two sad looking specimens are Cisgium cumini. 
and I tried to overwinter these outside as an experiment. I'd got um, quite a number, so I had these like spare uh, Java plum, Jamoon plants. Uh, the ones inside are fine, uh, but these definitely are not coal hardy. So that experiment's failed, so I need to chuck these in the bin. But I thought I'd just share that with you, the viewers, before they went in the bin. These somehow have managed to keep a few leaves, so they're not quite dead. A couple have died. Um, there's five in the pot. These have still retained the leaves, although they look terrible. Uh, they might still survive. So uh, Perhaps it's because they were a bit bigger than the um, seedlings in the other pots. So I'll put that in a corner somewhere, chuck out the others and maybe see how they get on over the summer. So what else have I got to share with you? Uh, let me see. Over this side, I've got another Bougainvillea. And as I said with the other one, it does need pruning, but that will have to wait because um, the flowers will appear on this year's growth. So if I start chopping things back, it's going to possibly um, cut off potential flowers. This is my fig tree. Uh, I got a single stem cutting back in 2015. And I tried to prune it to keep it a, a, a decent size. I don't want it to grow massive. So I was kind of trying to go for a fan shape here. It's got little um, figs appearing. I did pinch off some of the stems. So hopefully that will trigger it into producing little figs. The pot does need changing, but um, that'll be something on the to-do list. This here is my um, Camellia sinensis, a tea plant. So this is where you get tea leaves from. Um, over the winter, it had some yellowing, some uh, obviously nutrient deficiency going on. So I have fed it and it's starting, the, the new growth has got nice green growth, but the yellow growth, that's not going to change it. That will eventually fall off. But the new growth is nice and green and healthy. It's quite a decent size. And this is a eucalyptus tree I have. And then next to it, I've got one of three pomegranate uh, trees, an unnamed variety. I don't know what variety it is. I got this from Golden Days. There were actually two growing in one pot, which I've separated. So pomegranate or in Bangla, they call it Dalim. No flowers as yet. Um, it did flower when I first got it, but it's not flowered since. So keep an eye out, keep checking it. But we've really not had much hot weather and they do respond better if in the hot weather. And it needs to be in a bigger pot as well. Lots of shoots lower down, so I don't know whether that's a hindrance to the plant, I'm not sure. There's a little herb section here, I've got rosemary, thyme, lots of different mints. I do like different types of mint. I've got some uh, Moroccan chocolate, strawberry, and I've even got cat mint. My cat likes mint. Well, the cat mint anyway. That's a new addition, mint strawberry. I had to keep them in the pots because uh, I want to keep them sort of separate. Got some chan leaves, rosemary here. So I've got stuff growing at the allotment, but I do like to have stuff at home as well. There's the cat mint that's already been happily chewed by my cat. I've got some veggies amongst the flowers. I've got my chilies and aubergine here. This one is about to uh, put out, I think it's got a little fruitlet, I'm not sure, I'll have to check afterwards. And I've got, these are seeds grown by me, this is a black chilli. Um, and these, I've bought some of these chilli plants because I didn't have much success germinating. And I've got a couple of chilli plants indoors that I've seed grown, the RG Lemon. 
and let me just see if I can get the get around this side and I'll pull out the labels of the chili plants but let's have a look at this pomegranate so this is pomegranate number two so this was in the same part as the one that you've just seen and I've had to cut this back because over winter it did very poorly a lot of died back I don't want this weed is growing here I need to pull that out so I'll cut it back so you can see where that stem is and it's become very bushy so don't know wh whether that will grow well or not right let's have a look at the chilies so these I got from the golden days nursery as I said my seed germination for chilies it wasn't very good this year so that one's called Apache I've had that before that's a prolific one I've got a Thai chili down there um, let me just get in a bit closer get the label out there we have it there's the jalapeno jalapeno chilies and there is the hot Thai chilies so it's a smaller plant but it's covered in little buds and flowers the Apache taller plant and over here in the corner is the bird's eye chilli next to it is just a standard chilli and the black chilli that I've just shown you I got the seeds of the black chilli from the Bangladesh uh, Gardeners Society it's sweet seed swap I've also got a naga chilli and I've also got argy lemon so these little geraniums, I got these a bargain, 50p each. So I've planted three in each pot, uh, different colours. And over the summer, hopefully they'll bush out and I'll have lots of colour. So um, my local uh, corner shop, Mr Malix, sell plants as well. And I've got some dwarf French beans here. These are not the first lot of beans, the purple ones. Fortunately, got eaten by slugs. So these are one of my hanging baskets. I do them myself. And I love the colour combination, the diaskia and the uh, geraniums, petunias, lobelias. Uh, looking good. So there, here we are in the back garden. This is a bit of a, a woodlandy vibe to it. Um, not neat and regimental. This is my uh, olive tree. I got this back in 2015 from Ikea. It's a little small pot plant. I pop it, I put it in ground and I've not really done much to it. Uh, you know, it's just took off and it's really, you know, it's, it's grown really tall. I had to cut back half of the branches. Uh, a couple of years ago, I got the greenhouse and what happened is it was brushing up right next to the greenhouse and it was in danger of poking through the plastic so i had to cut back a lot of the branches and as a re result it looks like it's leaning heavily to one side but it hasn't stopped it from getting flower buds and it does produce a lot of flowers and little olives every year so what i've done to stop the lean getting any further I've tied it to that fence post over there and hopefully it will sort of eventually balance itself out you know it'll grow branches on this side that's the olive trees don't know how tall it is but it is pretty tall I've got my Christmas tree over on the other side and that's massive as well so here I've got two fruit trees that I bought back in May I never featured them in a video and this is uh, Granny Smith's apple. I got these from B and M stores, and it worked out at six pound uh, if you bought two. Seven pound fifty if you bought them, you know, the singular trees. This has put out quite a bit of new growth, but I don't expect, you know, it's it's not going to flower and fruit, uh, maybe for a couple of years. It's a young tree. I need to get more soil in there. These are not going in ground. Um, there's no space in my garden and I don't plant trees too close to the house for obvious reasons 
This is pear tree Doyen du Comice. So the both of these trees from uh, B and M, and I need to get some more. John in his number three soil lo loam based compost. Better for you know fruit trees. You need something a bit solid. And uh, what else have I got? Oh yes, I have already featured the um, kiwi vine here. This is the Jenny variety. I got this from Golden Days not long ago and uh, it's one that self-pollinates so I don't need to get two of these, you know, two uh, like a male flowering and a female flowering one. So this, this hopefully will produce for me in a few years. That's Jenny. That's the second one that I bought. I bought one a couple of years ago and I never repotted it. So I've not made that mistake this time and repotted it and hopefully it'll be happy I'm not sure which position i'm going to have it at, either over this side here where i'm planning to just keep all my fruit trees or maybe on the back fence and this is another new addition this is a grapevine i got this from asda's which is a supermarket it used to be part of the walmart chain and this variety is lake mount, lake mount and it's um I'm not sure if it's a seedless one. So this is the third grapevine that I bought. Actually, the fourth, to be honest. Had one for about eight years, and then that died. And then I got one last year, Solaris, but that succumbed to some kind of fungal red blotches all over it, and then it promptly died. Didn't grow back. So this little one, hopefully, it will survive. Now, this is one of the cuttings that I got from... Brett Lyons from his uh, parents' fig tree. He kindly sent me uh, quite a number of cuttings. Uh, this one's come unrooted for some reason. Uh, maybe an animal's jumped on it, a cat or whatever, and it's uprooted it. Um, so that one's not going to survive. But this one did well last year. It had uh, a single fig on it. So thank you, Brett, for sending me those cuttings. Uh, Brett's channel is Lionheart84 and he's got hundreds of fruit trees if you want to check out his channel. Um, this is a bottle gourd vine. Uh, it's a Bangladeshi vegetable, very popular in the Bangladeshi community. Um, so I'm growing it again. I'm not growing too many this year. I've sold a ton of them to people who like to grow them. I've kept one back for myself. And I've also got growing in the same pot the hyacinth beans, which I do like these beans. And they're a bit tricky to grow. They're, they're a heat-loving um, vegetable. We've not had much of that, but it's managed to produce beans. Over here I've got some tomatoes. I think this is a Roma uh, variety. Some seed-grown cannas there. And these are my aubergine, more aubergine. I um, do like the aubergines in my family. Uh, this is the third uh, pomegranate plant. This is a name variety, Pomegranate Wonderful. I got this from Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic Plants, not Jurassic Park, <laughs> Jurassic Plants um, a couple of years ago. And it's doing fine. It does need a repot though. These raspberry canes, they just come up every year. I don't particularly like raspberries. I got this as a, a shoot, a runner from a, a raspberry farm up in Inverness 30 odd years ago. And uh, it does produce raspberries, but nobody eats them. Not really keen on them. This is my rockery. And I planted some more uh, rockery plants, alpines if you like. And uh, hopefully they'll do well. So there we have it. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.